interesting, but preferably not too far. Why do I do this? You may ponder. It's to provide you with a regular Sunday wonder. A Sunday wonder of nothing I'm more fond of. A Sunday wonder of nothing I'm more fond of. Sit back, relax, lay out the snacks and let me do the walking. I'm here and there, I'm everywhere, I even do some talking. Come along with me. Yeah! Okay. This is weird because, like, how do you, it's like it needs to be a bit more casual, doesn't it? But it's uh, I've written them out as questions. So. Well, there's only so much casualty that you can <laughs> get out of being sat in a tiny room with cameras pointing at us, holding yeah, um, black lollipops. <laughs> this is a black lollipop. Okay. Mm. You don't get black lollipops. You don't get licorice. Lo- now I don't like licorice, I, was say, so I, don't I wouldn't have it. But, but but for those who like licorice. And lollipops. Yeah. My kids, um, we've started by the way, yeah, my kids, fun. I'm a fan of the ice cream. Yeah. And the ice cream cone, the cornet. Um, I was never a fan of the ice lolly, but my boys will always go for an ice lolly over an ice cream cone. That's yeah. messed up. No, I'm the, I'm the same, yeah. I would, I would choose an ice cream over an ice lolly. Then as I was it's driving... satisfying. I was driving through London and I saw a new restaurant opening up and it's like burgers, milkshakes, frozen custards. Frozen custards. I've got no idea how that would work. But that sounds to me like the most delicious thing in the world. Frozen custards. Custards, plural. Custards, yeah, yeah. So are we talking flavoured custards? Yellow custard, classic, plain. Classic, yeah. Um chocolate custard yeah strawberry custard banana custard banana custard the best dessert and i think this was i looked at your questions and i think this was the first question on there so i'm just going to jump in the best dessert ever is bananas in custard yeah it's a classic oh it's it's uh, it's, if there's if mum's got nothing else here's a tip for the mums mums if you've got nothing at home for dessert you panic in we'll just chop up a banana uh, make up some custard from custard powder and um, put it in, and that's 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 classic. That's that's, that's classic, classic dessert, and that's going to be in my new recipe book, Cooking with Lee. How tall were you when you first got on TV? Sorry. How tall were you when you first got on television? I think I was the same height. Well, no, he, I, that 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 is a, is an excellent question. Thank I'm you. shrinking. Okay. So like an old lady. Yeah. Are uh, um like little treehorn? Do, do anyone remember that book? No. I used to love that book, The Shrinking of Little Treehorn. And it was a boy and he was shrinking. It was a great book. Um, so I'm like a modern day little treehorn. I think I was close to six foot five when I first got on television. I'm six foot three and a half now. Um, Nick Knowles is releasing an album soon. But what's the most embarrassing thing that you've ever done to impress women that are too young for you? <laughs> Um, is buy a copy of the Nick Knowles album um, and rush around to see him and get it signed, thinking that will get girls horny. Um, oh, I've my whole life has been constantly uh, trying to impress girls and um, failing miserably. Um, who's the most famous person you've ever sent a text message to? I sent one to Robin Asquith earlier on today, wishing him a happy birthday. Um, Steve Gutenberg. Legend, yeah, Steve Gutenberg, amazing. Imagine that. I'm friends with Mahoney. I know that is what, like, loud. of all the famous people that you're friends it's with, incredible. Steve Gutenberg's the one I'm most. And because I haven't really of. got very many famous friends, you know, <laughs> people like Mackenzie and um, oh, my, I was no, Danny Wallace and people like that, you know, kind of friends. So they're they're sort of of a level, and I've got a couple of friends like that, and then suddenly it just jumps up to Steve Gutenberg. There's no there's no stepping stones. It's, it's Danny Wallace, Mackenzie, Steve Gutenberg. Are your kids impressed with Mahoney? No, no, no. They, they, uh, this may surprise you. They've seen neither um, the Police Academy nor the Cocoon movies, so they got no idea who that guy is yet. You wait; the time yeah. will be right. Yeah, I might have to show them the edited version of Police Academy One because the unedited one's quite racist. Yeah, yeah. A, they bandy that M word around. It's, yeah. Wow. Shame. It's the it's the funniest. But, but not because of the racism, despite no. the racism. I guess, there's well. definitely a diminishing returns when it comes no. to police. There's not. Film. There's not. Uh, I, I can give you the order of funny. 
so number one is number one. Uh, number three is number two. Number six is number three. Number four is number... F no, number two is number four. Number four is number five. I've missed one out. Seven is... Well, but if I... Seven can't be six. Right. One is... One is one. Yeah. Six is two. Um... Oh, Jesus. One is one. Six is two. Two is... No, one is one. Six is two. Three is three. Two is four. Four is five. Ah! Five is six. And seven is seven. There we go. We got there. And yeah, I was missing out five. I was missing out five. Sorry, guys. And that is the official order in which... But please call me six. Surprisingly strong film. Is that Mission into Moscow? No, that's um, Seven. And that's the one that makes no sense yeah, whatsoever. I, when I worked with Christopher Lee for three months, he wouldn't let you ask him about Dracula. But he did once tell a very long story about Police Academy. <laughs> when I worked on Police Academy 7, Mission to Moscow, I was the first ever British actor to give a speech entirely in Russian in Red Square. And he talked about that, but he wouldn't talk about Dracula. Was it cool to meet him, though? Oh, it's amazing to yeah. meet him. Yeah, 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 of course. It's Christopher Lee. My, it was granddad. <laughs> My granddad. Uh, you stole Tommy Boyd's act, but yes. whose act did he steal? Oh, God. Uh, it, well, here's the interesting thing. He stole mine via time travel. Oh. So it's like that film, not Looper, but the one where the man is his own mum and dad. Paradox, is it called Paradox or something? Basically, spoiler alert, there's a time travel film where a man is his own mum and dad. Um, and that's the same with me and Tommy. So he stole my act from... The future. Well, yeah, but he stole my act from about three years... No, from about five years ago and then went back in time to the 90s and did it. Makes sense. Yeah, Makes sense. right, so it works. Who's your favourite member of the Monkees? Mickey Dolenz. Why don't you marry him? Um, do you know what? I might just do that. And then if I did, I would get take wedding pictures. In fact, I've got... I've got um, <laughs> I've, me, me got, and Mickey did get married, and I've got a picture. And you're not allowed to put this on your website, but um, <laughs> that's us getting married. Oh, there we that go. Is that's us getting married there. Who would play you in a film of Ricky Gervais's life? Oh, that is um, that's delicious. I would ho well, knowing my luck, I wouldn't. I'd get overlooked for that as well. Um, I think. Um, the young gentleman who's in the new Star Wars movies, I'd like him to. John Boyega. Yeah, I think he's. I think yeah. he's got the talent, and the he's got that winning smile that I've got. In fact, my trademark winning smile. He's got that, and he's um, he's good looking, but he's not too good looking. Um, he's got charisma. He's. Um, I think he's as close as you could possibly get to me. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. So, Ian, you've done some very experimental things on the radio this year. You've started a petition against bland radio. You've played hide and seek. You've taken withheld calls straight to air. Yes. And just this week, you farted and followed through. Yeah, that's, that's a true story. So, what's next? Um, uh, I think that's it. I think we've. I think we've peaked. I can't think of anything else. Here's the thing. I do, I'm kind of struggling to come up with. I t and I tweeted earlier. I don't know how to take this to the next level. I don't even know what taking it to the next level means. But um, I'm more determined than ever with the time left on this contract to kind of. Th there will be a time at some point where we'll have to kind of settle back into our easy chairs and our comfy slippers and do a slightly more straightforward show. It'll still be funny. But until we get told to do that, I want to make it even more insane but also i don't want to scare away too many listeners so i don't know um i would like i would like um like a uh, this is going to sound sick but this is genuinely i think there'd be something in this slaughtering an animal live on air but but one that we would then eat 
because uh, this I, we, we know you know kids these days don't know where their food comes from and stuff and i was a vegetarian for a long time but now i'm a meat eater and you know what it turns out for that meat to be made you've got to kill it so part of me thinks we should have a, sh- a, a, a a show pet like a chicken or a rabbit or something and we get we get to know it and we look after it and then someone comes in and slaughters it and skins it and cooks it and then we invite some listeners in and we eat it we eat benji or you know whatever um so i think killing an animal on air do you want to plug your late night radio show while i roll my eyes and look embarrassed uh that would be really good if you wouldn't mind uh i host the late night alternative on talk radio which it goes out weeknights monday to friday those are weeknights from 10 o'clock at night until well until about one o'clock in the morning but if it's going well We'll have a hashtag radio lock-in and the show will continue uh, a little bit more. I present it with my friend Catherine Boyle. Uh, It's a phone-in show where we eschew all the usual tropes of speech radio, Muslim, Brexit, Trump and all of that are gone. And we sit there and we ask which song has the best second verse and if you had to eat a, a, um, a member of your family, who would it be? There really is nothing like it on British radio. You can listen on DAB, you can download the Talk Radio app or listen online at www.talkradio.co.uk. Don't forget to download the podcasts. Ian, thanks for listening to my questions and also thanks for answering my questions. I didn't listen to your questions, Mark. I just waited for you to stop speaking and then I said whatever it was I wanted to say. Hopefully through clever editing, you can now fit in questions that will... (laughs) fit in with the bollocks i was talking (laughs) hey man it's not oh it's nice to see you thank you i think what you're doing is um very good and um you know i think it's uh i I love your channel i think the stuff that you do is excellent and it's a thrill to to be asked to be on it so thank you thank you thank you thank you for being on it again up your bum hello 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 Hello. Hello. yeah goodbye do you think you could kill someone yeah yeah Yeah. genuinely yeah 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 oh uh, yeah definitely is this a trick question? Because, yeah, I could. I thought about it. Of course I could. All right, I'll say it. I don't mind Bill Haley. I don't <laughs> mind him. I think he's all right. This is gold, isn't it? Right, boys? There's it's amazing. Something choppable out of this. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, me. I'm choppable. You bastards. You've embarrassed yourself there, Mark. If anything, I've lost respect for you. <laughs> <laughs>